Hello and welcome back to Switch to Linux. We are uh, going to record this part over here because we were having 15 minutes of technical issues at the start of the stream. And this was just such a good good level of content I wanted to chat about. So are we slowly marching in towards this surveillance state? And so the what we want to talk about is how we're just kind of giving up things into the um, the digital world. And I first got the idea on this um, article from The Guardian. And uh, looking at this Guardian article, uh, the observer from economics, Philip Inman, says, if you let Google have your data, why not the NHS? Well, I don't really want to let Google have my data anyway. There's just unfortunately times I don't have a lot of choice. And that becomes one of the challenges. In fact, I was talking about that with a friend last night where um, we were talking something about trackers, or whatever else. And uh, I was mentioning, you know, Facebook will track you even if you don't have a Facebook account. They'll still track you. They still track you all the time. And if they follow you around the web and if you ever log into a Facebook account, then they really think that you're this person. Otherwise, they just track you around. Uh, and actually, right now, tonight, Glenn Beck just re had released a um, uh, one of his special reports on propaganda. I've only watched like half of it because, you know, just started at six and I had some things to do before the show. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll watch what he says from time to time. And uh, this one here, he's talking a lot about the big tech services. And he mentions Google and Android. And these guys are involved in campaigns that he disagrees with and things. Well, the problem is he just released a brand new site, which has tracking pixels for Facebook, has tracking pixels for Google. So he's feeding the very machine that he is saying is a serious problem. Well, it's a serious problem because everyone keeps feeding it. Um, of course, um, there were a lot of other things to mention here. Um, there was, uh, you know, health health companies. Of course, they were found in hot water about having tracking pixels because that can really show. They can snap your your screen just like Microsoft's recall and see what's going on. They can see what your medical issues are. Uh, we're going to look at an article in the new, weekly news round this week. At least it's in my uh, articles to look at where now financial institutions are in trouble. Um, there were uh, H and R Block, um, I think QuickBooks, H and R Block, and two other ones, uh, two other big ones as well. They were um, they were being examined right now by regulators because they are also have these and it, it basically leaks the financial data of everybody to these big companies. The problem is we sometimes don't even really have the option, uh, except you can do some things on your local system and you can block them. And uh, we will talk a little bit about these as we go. But this article starts out with this premise. If you let Google have your data, why not the NHS? Of course, this is UK NHS is the. Uh, health system uh, going on over there. And so that's kind of the part of the premise that I don't really want them having the data either. I don't really want anybody having this data unless I explicitly decide to give it. And I haven't. And so um, some Google services can be good. I'm not saying we should have completely avoid Google at all times. My business, we use, uh, we use Google for um, a, the forward facing public number because it just gives me a, a safe way to have a number online that people first learning about me can call. I can screen everything. I have better blocking tools, but I don't spend a ton of time talking on it. I usually just use it as a basic, uh, in, 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 um, ingestion into the business. And then if we're going to work together, then you have a better number to reach me. So there's useful things that they can do. Obviously, we do this on YouTube, among other video hosting platforms as well. So there's things that Google can do well. But the challenge is, is that they are cramming this data so far. It should always be our choice. So why are we assuming, as this article does, that it's okay to just give all of this data to Google? And it's not. And you guys have it any commentary it's, on that? It's theft of personal um, personal information yeah yeah um it is arguably agree. online stalking yes. yes it is it is exactly online stalking especially if i can't say no i don't want this data tracked and the only way i have to stop that from happening is to take active specific steps of course what about facebook uh they're doing the same things tracking pixels for facebook Google Analytics and TikTok. So, of course, um, I used to have a hosts file. Of course, uh, there's other better ones that stay completely up to date online now that you can get. 
and running that host file either on your computer or on your router for your whole network level is a great way to um, uh, a great way to block a lot of those things because if you're running something like that then nothing in your system or in your network depending on where you have it then nothing in that area will get out and um, uh, and will be able to access those trackers so that's really a way you can do it now I still have to do some work with Google Analytics I had to do some search console work this week um, one of my clients I have to do some Facebook stuff for him so I have one browser that busts out of my network's firewall that allows me to do those but I don't use it for anything else and so that's uh, a way to do it. Now, if you're just uh, talking about your basic browser at the uh, lowest level, use uh, EFF's privacy badger um, add-on that will block those. Because even like some of your ad blockers may not block Google Analytics or Facebook Analytics. Uh, you can, of course, set a custom, it, well, as long as you're not using the Manifest V3 uh, uBlock Origin Lite, you can set a custom script uh, or custom uh, block file to block those. But otherwise, Privacy Badger will do a good job. And, of course, network blocking is really your, your first uh, biggest step. So anybody else uh, want to comment before we move on and look at a few more articles? This may be a little bit out of the box and a little extreme, but if you don't want these people to uh, get your data and you know they're taking your data, why not get a restraining order against them? Yeah, well, we can't necessarily because they're just big companies doing doing big company things. Um yeah, but I, if you get a restraining order against them and you can get a judge to sign off on it, then they're doing legal activity to you. No, no, because because you don't have to be involved in that. You just have to stay off the Internet. So you can avoid it by staying off the Internet. Yeah. It, if you don't go to your doctor's web page uh, per his instructions, then you won't get caught up in Google's um, uh, No, your doctor dragging. will just put all your information on a server to, and Google will get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's you have no recourse. Cer certainly the case. That's the problem. We don't have no recourse to what these companies are doing to us. That's why I said restraining yep. order, you know, but... What can, yeah, no well, other... a, a restraining order wouldn't work in in the case of a company because of a restraining course, order know, really needs silly. to be. It's out. It's out of the box, silly. But yeah, it is. We that's... have nothing to fight back with. Yeah, that's that's other... true. Saldo. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, one of the reasons why people uh, are uh, like me is uh, running um, several ad blockers. It's it, it's not <laughs> just to block ads, but uh, they also. Um, in addition, at least some of them uh, also block uh, most of these uh, trackers, such as the Facebook Pixel and so on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk about some of the other ways that we're kind of forced to do business with companies we may not want to be forced to. Um, I thought I had it in my notes here, but apparently I don't. Oh, yeah, I just mentioned here public life. Uh, so governments requiring or trying to require us to use specific services. So, of course, we all need a place to live. So there's um, a bunch of tenant screening sites. So uh, we're seeing this proliferation of large corporate landlords now, which are the worst landlords. You never want to rent from a company if you can avoid it. Unfortunately, more and more of the housing market is being caught up by these guys. And so there is a list. These are uh, these are some of the the landlord uh, tenant screening sites. Now, the big problem with these is it's one thing if you do a basic credit check and they can see if you're paying your bills or not. But these companies here that are being established and used by these big corporate landlords, if you are going to rent with one of these companies, you are required to enter your data into these. So the problem is, is that the data follows you around and they create this giant database of you directly related to this. Now, it's one thing that, sure, maybe it's a good thing for landlords to have information if you are actually... Um, actually abusing places and not paying your rent and you're a seriously problem tenant. The problem is, is that most corporate landlords, and it's been my experience, I've rented from individual couples, I've rented from small local companies, I've rented from corporate landlords. Corporate landlords are the worst. They are incomprehensibly moronic. They are specifically um, uh, malicious 
Uh, and the one I was working with, they actually had a settlement with the attorney general's office for the state. And not even three months later, I had to file a lawsuit against them in order to get back most of the security deposit, which I still hold that they completely withheld inappropriately. I should have stayed through and let it actually go to court because they probably would have gotten their case reopened with the attorney general's office because I have infinite amounts of evidence and you know none of the other people did. And so, uh, in light of all of that, the um, these corporations are throwing data in, and then what they are doing is they're sharing it with everybody else, and there's a whole lot of these. And it's like, well, you need a place to live. You might be forced to be inside of one of these individual systems. And so, that is certainly, um, uh, certainly a problem because... Now they're keeping these databases on all these people and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's kind of crazy. So anybody have thoughts on uh, tenant landlord situations or horror stories, anything like that? I had a uh, friend a while ago um, and she, she was looking for a place to stay and she insisted that she did dealt with renting a place on a one-to-one -one basis rather than using a company because she discovered there's a website that actually has a list of all these companies that are renting places. And if you get on one, you're automatically graded A to F. And she found a lot of them that she had inquired about that some of them at best had a C. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, probably, um, good service is not priority for these companies because all they have to do is sell the rental com the um, uh, the landlord company on it and then you're stuck with whatever they're doing it's the same reason why when I, we did um, I helped a start up in uh, in a uh, online homework system we didn't have to go and sell the students we just had to sell the professor and if you you know we would prioritize the sections to have a thousand students because if we sell the thousand student professor we've just made a thousand units of sale versus if we sell a professor for 30 bucks eh, it's 30 bucks worth you know or uh, 30 students worth of sales, but we'd rather have that thousand, you know, so we'll right. wine and dine those guys. Uh, that's all we had to do is just sell them. So, I mean, it's, it, it's crazy, you know, even with the cars doing all their data collection on top of what we're talking about. Yep. Yep. Uh, next one I want to mention is the IRS. Now, they they tried to force everybody that wanted to. Of course, the, the IRS, you're required to communicate with them. You are required to, uh, you know, to pay your taxes. And oftentimes, being as that they are a completely incompetent group of people, um, you would have to get a hold of them. They stopped answering their phones a number of years back. You could call them and they will just ring forever. Or you will be into an answering service and you will be on hold for three hours and nobody ever picks up the phone and then inexplicitly it hangs up on you. So they're like, well, you just do everything online. And then they were trying to force everybody to use ID.me to access their online services. Now, of course, this put every security company in the world's focus on ID.me and it turned out that they were among the worst secured companies in the world. And this is a company that's wanting you to pass up your ID and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So they rescinded the forced requirement, but they still really, 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 really prefer if you verify yourself with ID.me. To verify your identity, you will need to provide a photo of your driver's license. I'm sorry, I'm not giving a copy of my photo driver's license to a corporation online. It ain't happening. Okay, take a selfie using a smartphone or a computer webcam. No, no. These are slimy companies with horrible security who are getting the minimum effort done on the cheapest possible budget. This well, is my, insane. The ID.me is not just for the IRS. It's for anything that has to yes. do with the government, social security. But no, I it's, have, it's, it's goes far ID. beyond that. It goes far beyond that. I, it it does, is, it is one of the ID verification that. platforms. The problem is, is that the IRS was trying to force people to use this as are other companies trying to force people to use it. Why are we being forced to use a company with a shoddy terms of service that we may not agree with? Yeah. Yep, my own company is actually trying to force me to sign up with ID.me and get myself like verified by them. Yeah. No. There's another no. one called uh, login.gov. They're competitors. And the uh, Social Security Administration will use either one of them. 
Yeah, well, login.gov is a government-run site. It's not a corporation. And then uh, they didn't... They, they, I could not get the login.gov to work for me, so I had to use the um, the ID dot me ID one. Dot me one, and and I'm hearing myself. I'm hearing myself. I think Mark's. I think uh, Mark. I'm going to mute Mark because you're reverberating. <clears throat> but um, what they do is they they give you ten keys, and they're like ten digits long, and you're supposed to write them down. And every time you log in, you use one of those keys, and it's burnt. You can't use it anymore. And you and and, and and as you log in, you burn these keys up, and then when you're on your last key, they'll give you ten more. That is insane. You know, without these keys, you can't log in. Stupid. It is. It's over no. extreme. But, but to just be basically involved in society. They're trying to force you to use these. Of course, uh, we talked about in our news uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, the background check companies, uh, you know, to do any type of thing with a background check, you know, uh, comes out, oh, we need a background check. We need a background check, you know, use this company. And, you know, one of those, actually, I think all of those companies, all of their data leaked. So every bit of information about you, um, you know, so it's, it's kind of nutsoids to see uh, what's going on there. So, but the uh, one time uh, key thing is uh, uh, the uh, is how the um, key fobs and the uh, one time uh, uh, login uh, the second, uh, yeah. But you have those one physical key which rotates and you don't have to get a new one, <laughs> yeah. But uh, they are automate, it's the, it's the same principle. Uh, mm -hmm. You're generating a one time key, yeah. Um, and having him written down is uh, also how the uh, Russian uh, um, state, uh, the Russian embassies around the world um, managed for many years to have encrypted the communication because they used a key once only. Well, so so uh, Rusty says works, here but, yeah. uh, about Persona recently, LinkedIn account was restricted and I can't log in. They tell me to get my account back. I must submit a government ID with persona <laughs> it happened yeah <laughs> guess, I, far, guess i'm getting a new linkedin account <laughs> as far as the irs goes i don't have no dealings with them i don't do anything to generate any taxes so i don't have to file a tax return so they can buzz off there you go same here uh See, there's another one called Yodi that sites are using these days, too. Requires an app with all of your info put into it, including your ID. My Lord. Hi, Matthew Moore. Greetings. Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, but that's terrifying. Matthew, you show up and then terrify me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Reason for multiple keys is to get people accustomed to when they bring the microchip implant and generates the keys for you. Awesome. Yes. The mark of the beast is coming. We're going to hit a UB key. It's go, and then out of your right hand comes the UB key slot. You hit it, you know. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Just yeah, like wouldn't that be me. ironic if uh, UB key is uh, what the system ends up being when the uh, mark comes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Well, you know, as I was talking about the other day, of course, some people, um, Mark, you're, we're getting a lot of feedback from you, Mark. Can you figure out your microphone situation? Um, so what were, um, <laughs> I was talking about this the other day, eh, not to get, not to get super political here is bear with me for a second, but you know, some people are, are, um, are obviously, um, uh, Mr. Trump will be completely evil, you know, Hitler-esque. Uh, other people are literally saying, you see, find these in the Christian circles, he's the, the, the Antichrist. You know, if we elect the Antichrist in office, it just means Jesus is coming back sooner. I'm okay with that proposition. I just, me too. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, we're not going to stop him. The Bible says he's going to rule. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the only problem with that is that... Uh... The uh, scripture uh, says in several uh, of the uh, prophets that he uh, is called uh, the uh, Assyrian, so he will come from the uh, roughly yes. the uh, broad area. Yeah, where yeah. Obviously, is, um, we're 
obviously, um, um, the the uh, the orange man is is not the Antichrist. Uh, it's just just pointing out the fact that uh, you know it's like just let's just go ahead and and live our lives to the best of our ability. I would just like to live my life without having to be forced to get caught up in all this stuff. And this it's- brings us to our main topic for tonight. The main thing that got me into this, and this is this company called Flock Safety. Ever hear of this company? I didn't until I saw the um, uh, Steve Lado video about it uh, a couple days ago. Was it yesterday or two days ago? Mm-hmm. Um, he he had this video, and now now I'm seeing all sorts of things about Flock uh, Flock Safety. First and foremost, let's talk about the name Flock Safety. Um, the safety of all of the group, the safety of all of the people. Let's sacrifice ultimate privacy to have ultimate security. That is the definition of tyranny. Mm-hmm. So eliminate crime in your community. Look yeah. at this, guys. We can eliminate crime. All it's going to take is 24-7 AI cameras watching everywhere. I want crime in my community. I want to go outside <laughs> with my shotgun and start shooting at people while they're shooting at me. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, disavow, disavow. <laughs> yeah, and they have done uh, um, uh, champion, uh, championing for the uh, uh, purge to be uh, in, in, enacted in law. <laughs> Step by side, I, I, yell, get off my lawn. I really, I, I really, I really think we need to plug these cameras <laughs> to the other people. Yeah, turn it around, turn the turn them around. Boom. Yeah. yeah, that did All happen here. They have some. So, kill them if you can. They have I some wonder. cameras on uh, 275, and for a while there was a guy going not, around about every go. three weeks, blowing them out with a shotgun, and it took them like a whole summer to catch this guy. We need to cut out. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say, uh, how would the people in those companies that are making all of those? like security cameras and all the spying apparatus, how would they feel if they would have this technology in their own houses? Right. Some of them might. Well, you know, it's like my neighbor. I just, I took a Amazon package over to her house because it was wrong, wrongly delivered. So I took it over to her house. I know she has a ring doorbell. Not great. This this person next door to me has got a camera like, this, right at my this house. Is, yeah, this is as far as I'm taking your package, lady. Well, you know, I can't go outside down the side of my house and work on it or anything without being spied on with this thing, this yeah. ring door bell thing. So, so is- here's the rundown of Flock Safety. Um, Flock Safety, of course, they are, look at this, they're like HOAs in neighborhoods. That's all we need. The HOA networks now putting up Flock Safety grid nets to track everything in their HOAs. These people are insane enough. We have higher ed institutions, K-12 through schools. Your children could be subjected to this nonsense. Property managers, ooh, businesses. Now, and their big one, and the one that really brought this to my light, at least, is law enforcement. And so the challenge here with their law enforcement is that they have these license plate reader cameras. And the theory that they're going with is that the license plate reader cameras are deemed illegal to have a license plate reader. It's not vi- it's not a violation of search terms in other words. The challenge is, is that the lawsuit, which is strategically done in Norfolk, Virginia, because this particular court um, is it fourth, uh, fourth circuit or fifth circuit court, whatever court this one is, um, the U S district court for the Eastern district of Virginia, this, uh, court jurisdiction has actually ruled that, uh, recently ruled that a case in Baltimore was a violation because they were running a series of drones and keeping an eye on everything and basically having this, uh, login of data. And so, the lawsuit here says that this network is doing the same thing. Now, there are thousands of jurisdictions around the country that have these. They say f- over 5,000 communities where this is active. And so they're saying that, um, you know, why did they bring it here? Well, they brought it here because there was a recent court case which has a lot of things which the privacy sector won. And so that's actually pretty good. That was Beautiful Struggle versus Baltimore where they found that it was uh, a violation of the Fourth Amendment to um, uh, to get up there and uh, have these drones constantly circling and spying on and analyzing everything going on. 
That is what they allege. Now, what the flock safety and the police department said is, no, this is a, you know, license plate readers are they're you know they're protected this is not a violation well the problem is and the reason that this the difference between this this isn't just a license plate reader this is an entire network a dragnet as it were around each one of these 5000 communities that is not only seeing what's going on, because if there's a security camera up there and they're really only pulling the footage out of it, if there's an accident or some crime reporter in the area, I'm okay with that. I shouldn't be okay with that, I'm but I'm okay, okay with, with that. that. Okay. If they're a red light camera, I want to abolish red light cameras altogether because there's no human being or speed cameras. There's no human being that can go in and attest I was actually speeding. What if my speedometer says I wasn't and your thing says you were? Now we have two computers talking to each other. I was the one driving with the GPS and this is just a machine which is fallible and might have an error in the code. But what the difference is is that the flock system, it utilizes all these cameras with license plate readers and tags various elements. What is the make and model of the vehicle? What is the color? Is there anything distinctive? Does it have um, uh, does it have bumper stickers? Anything like that? All of that kind of stuff around it. All right. And then what it does is it keeps track of all these things, and then. It will log them and share them with the other departments as well. And now you have a searchable database where without a warrant, a police officer can go in there, enter a license plate and see everywhere that vehicle has been for, they say up up to or at least 30 days. I'm not sure if it's up to or at least or longer. Are they really deleting their data over 30 days old? I have a sneaky suspicion they're probably not. But what's going on is it's effectively creating a dragnet over thousands of communities in America. And any law enforcement agent can get into that thing and see a license plate and where it's been, even if it has not been in their community. So the lawsuit alleges that they are violating the Fourth Amendment on this basis that it's not just a license plate reader. It is a license plate reader taking multiple points, creating a full image, which is searchable without a warrant. Now, this is specifically problematic because this exact system was actually used inappropriately several day or several times in Canvas, uh, Kansas, excuse me, officers, uh, officials, excuse me, were caught using the flock to stalk their exes, including a police chief who used his flock account 228 times over four months to track his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend's vehicles. So here is a police chief who is using this database to track people in and out of his own jurisdiction for no reason other than that's my ex-girlfriend. I want to see what she's up to. Nothing says crazy psycho stalker like that who has a gun and a badge. That's insane. Uh, California is restricted from sharing this data, uh, but several police departments didn't even know, realize that's what they're doing, and that's one of the problems with a lot of these companies we're talking about. People do not understand the scope of the data they are using. You buy somebody to put up a website, and they intrinsically put the Google Analytics in because it's who wouldn't want Google Analytics in their site? So you're giving yeah. all this data up to... Uh, to Google. Yeah. And so in California, it is a violation of California uh, law to share this data to, with, with a departments across the country, but they're doing it anyway. Must re- and that's the problem. All right. Go ahead, Mark. No. I was, I'm, I'm going to refrain. I was just going to say I've never met an intelligent police officer, but there's <laughs> one that might be, but I'm not positive. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure I'd characterize all intel. All police, I met a officers police officer that was particular. No, that was I mean, particularly very responsible or highly intelligent. I'll say well, that. I, I, uh, that's true. My gripe is not with the police chief here. Obviously, the police. There's if you look at the entire record of the police chief, there's other red flags in this police chief's cir- circumstance that uh, you can actually you can actually probably look at and be like okay there were there were warning signs that this guy would be a crazy stalker the problem is why did have the ability to track somebody's vehicle across the entire county without a warrant that's the problem temptation (laughs) these things when they're put up they 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 have temptation to the people on the other side that are looking at this stuff and going through the data 
they're tempted to look at it and they're tempted to follow something that's like uh, a, a thing of grapes, you know, they want to yeah. go through it and find the right grape after a while. And well, it, they're trying to find. Hello, uh -oh. is my Jitsi server dying? The no. Leak. Uh, does leak the mean a word to you? Yeah. A leak? Um, hacked? Yeah. You know, just I'm people doing it for fun general, to dump it on the internet. That's the that. that's the next factor. Is with this collection of data. Yeah, this is so insane that a hacker could get in here and leak this data, or they could just get in there and just abuse the data. Um. Myote says mandatory uh, new law is mandatory cameras in everyone's bedroom so the government can make sure you're not doing something wrong. You know to catch criminals and to protect children and all that, you know. If you're not doing anything wrong, you should be okay with the government watching you everywhere 24-7. Please think about the children. That's right. That's right, everybody. You gotta, you gotta put the telly screen up, folks. All right, Sabu. Yeah, so um about speed cameras and um, red light cameras, we do have them also here in Norway. But it seems like the difference is that uh, um, um, every uh, uh, time it catches uh, someone uh, either speeding or um, uh, running a red light, uh, a human being have to attest that uh, the image is of a decent quality, that they can read the uh, uh, number plate uh, one for once. And they also have to verify that they can see the face of the driver. If they cannot see who is driving, um, there is no one to ticket. Because unlike in the US, to my understanding, uh, the driver is being ticketed, not the owner. And the owner doesn't uh, have no legal obligation to tell you who was driving. Yeah, so in the United States, yeah, they, they would ticket the vehicle owner. And then it would be up to the vehicle owner could then uh, could then sue the person that was driving if it wasn't them. They could go and like I lent the I lent the defendant my car on such and such a date. Here's our text messages talking about our our uh, exchange of the vehicle so he could drive it. And then a court, a small claims court, would rule. Yeah, you got to pay him back for the ticket. Yeah, so. but you still get stuck with the uh, driving points and the insurance points, you know, unless you can well, somehow it, come up with a way to get out of that. I like I, I think that the only way you would actually accumulate points on those is to not pay them at all to my knowledge. Oh, um, but I get I, I would points are very, you know, hard to remove off your license yeah. once they're issued. Yeah, good Salba. Yeah, um, and, and the other uh, so uh, we we have uh, I don't know if you have this in the states but we have a um, um, uh, type of speed camera which uh, on a stretch of road, yeah, it, um, so there are two cameras, and uh, everyone is being taken a photo of uh, at each point, each end, and they measure uh, uh, the distance it takes from one camera to the other. And if you are over a certain configurable amount of, uh, uh, shorter than a configurable amount of time, then you have um, uh, driven over the speed limit uh, uh, on average. Um, and only then, um, if, uh, the condition matches. Uh, do the uh, image is the image being sent somewhere on, on the on the network? And if uh, and if there is um, and if the um, timer uh, is uh, over the uh, configured amount, meaning that you, you didn't you were you obeyed the speed limit, then the, the images are simply erased and they are not stored anywhere. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah. So. Then, then, of course, the next disturbing thing about this company is now they they paid $300 million for a 17-month-old drone startup called Aerodome. Aerodome sounds to me like something like a drone surveillance network. You know, the very kind that the court just ruled was unconstitutional in Baltimore. Now mm -hmm. Flock Camera owns one of those. So now we have traffic cameras everywhere, license plate reader cameras everywhere. They're monitoring your workplace. They're monitoring your school. They're monitoring your children in their schools. And now they want to put drones in the air to monitor everything else. Because to have ultimate crime-free life, you have to have a pure authoritarian surveillance state. And this the is that march. Is that, We've uh, got to stand like up to these companies. And we have got to stand up and let our governments know we cannot be doing this type of stuff. All right. Final comments on this subject. Um, the problem with this kind of society is that uh, uh, this is exactly the type of society that no one wants to live in. Correct. 
Yes. Agreed. Um, the final USSR thoughts? and yep. the other communist bloc countries had a lot of surveillance and hey, crime still happened, so I well, don't well, agree with the fact that 100% yeah. of the Italian would actually remove crime. Well, in fact, how much how much evidence do we have of crimes going on in New York City right now? Yet it's it's becoming a crime hellscape because yeah, they hoodies, have all the data. Yeah. They just aren't prosecuting anybody. Hoodies like six thousand arrests for shoplifting, and it was two, was it three hundred eighty seven people did six thousand arrests for shoplifting. Got to have so, hoodie and sunglasses, and you're exempt. Yeah, pretty much. There you Essentially. Go. Well, yeah. anyway, um, there is our slow march towards the surveillance state. Resist it as much as you possibly can. And with that, I hope that you enjoy switching links. And before I let you go as well, um, my new book is out. It is rolling out in all different places. Code Red. TLM.LI forward slash Code Red. I have that is a page now. It will give you a listing of all the various places. Of course, you can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere else you can buy a book online. Paperback ebook and uh, audiobook formats and that page tlm.li forward slash code red you can go there and that will provide you a variety of links and it's probably available more places than that i just haven't found all the links yet anyway with that thanks for watching and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux